Here's one of his main arguments. I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. If you say God created all this, you're going to have to ask who created God. And that's nonsense. And it is nonsense, but not in the way he thought. Because if you ask who created God, you're assuming God is created. Well, I don't believe in a created God. We usually call them idols, and we don't need Dawkins to tell us they don't exist. You see, he's not addressing even the question if there's an eternal God. The Bible claims God is eternal. He's not created. So his question doesn't even apply, as I pointed out to him in that debate. But then I got this thing in the tail. I said, you, you believe the universe created you, don't you? So let me ask you your question, which you think is valid. Who created your creator? I'm still waiting for an answer, and that's 10 years ago. Well, it's funny because when you talk about somebody saying, well, who created God? They're still staying inside the time-space cosmos. In other words, that, that we say that God created time and space, and so causality is, is in that idea, that if, that, that if God created something, who created God? But that's still inside the yeah. creation. But it's actually logically very silly. I mean, it's, I used to get it in Russia, and I used to, it, it used to be very funny. They'd ask me this question, or children would ask it in Britain. I never heard it from professors. But in Russia, they'd say this, and I, I'd say to them, these were the old days, you know, when I used to go. They'd tell me, I'd say, what do you believe about the universe? they say, it's eternal. Oh, I said, isn't that interesting? You believe in an eternal universe, and yet your question, who created God, shows you cannot conceive of an eternal God. Why is that? How can you conceive of an eternal universe, not an eternal God? It's just totally inconsistent. I said, your problem is, you can't even think there might be an eternal reality that is a person, you see. But it is a very silly objection, and to find it at the heart of his book. But I want to go back to the second main reason. I said Hawking and Dawkins' problem is they're dealing with the wrong concept of God by pitching God against science as an explanation. But now move to the science. And you can very easily see why Dawkins and the rest of them are completely wrong in suggesting God is the same kind of an explanation and therefore in competition with a scientific explanation. Very simple illustration. Why is the water boiling? Well, it's boiling because you've got heat energy from a gas flame being conducted through the bottom of a good Irish copper kettle and agitating the molecules of water. That's why it's boiling. Is it? It's boiling because I want a cup of tea. Now, people snigger at that and so on. Rightly so, because they see I'm being foolish. That the explanation in terms of heat energy, the scientific explanation, doesn't compete with the personal explanation of my desire for a cup of tea. In other words, both are correct. Both are correct. And you do not have to push one away and say this no. is the correct one. Both are It's as if correct. to say, because I can explain this in terms of heat equations and physics, John Lennox doesn't exist. I mean, that is the level of the argument I, at the moment. I, I actually remember in grade school getting this materialistic worldview pushed on us. People would say, a teacher would say, uh, you're made of chemicals, and if I were to reduce those chemicals and sell them, you're worth about two dollars and eighty-six cents. This is it's in the gone up a bit. In the seventies, in the seventies, anyway. yeah. You're but worth a bit more, Eric. In case right. you're Thank feeling you. fair. Yeah, now I'm you're worth, worth about seven more. or eight dollars. But, <laughs> but the thing is that that very idea is itself a lie. In other words, that that a human being could be reduced to chemicals. Right. I this am is, chemicals. This is, but, you're but I'm more. more than chemicals. That's right. I'm both. This is reductionism again. Yeah. Now, Go back to my illustration. Even kids can see it. Yeah. I, I tell kids in, in school, you know, they're 10 or 11. And I say to them, look, here's a, a Ford Galaxy engine, motor, in an automobile. Now, I want to give you two explanations for that. One is automobile engineering and physics. The other is Henry Ford. Tell me which explanation is true. But, sir, you need both. They've got it. Why cannot some of these high-powered professors see that? 
I, I the think way they're I, simply uncomfortable with the idea of God. I think they'll do anything to shy away from it because it really would blow their world to smithereens. It does. And it they does. are frightened. And I think that they're, you know, as I hear you talk, it strikes me that they and their ilk are on the run because science increasingly makes the case for God. The more science we know, this is the irony, and I think that this wouldn't have been true 100 years ago, and so that worldview has carried on and on through the decades, but that the science of the last 40 or 50 years points us more and more to believe that there's a God, and I, and I think that they're willfully ignorant of that, because to, to acknowledge, we haven't talked about the fine-tuned universe, but you couldn't know most of what we know about the fine-tuned universe 50 years ago. No. And the more we know about the universe, the more uncomfortable it makes someone who says, oh, there are plenty of planets out there with life on them, and it's inevitable that life will, will evolve. Well, let's and come to that in two minutes. Yeah. The bottom line for the argument I've just given is this. And anybody can use this argument. I'm always looking. C.S. Lewis taught me this. If you can't explain your faith in God and words that people can understand, either you don't believe it or you don't understand it. That's the big slogan in front of my mind. Help people understand. Here's the bottom line. God no more competes with science as explanation of the universe than Henry Ford competes with the law of internal combustion as an explanation for the motor car engine.